Okay, everyone, I'm gonna go through some subscriber stock picks. So every now and then, I ask subscribers to put their stock picks down in the comments below that they want me to analyze. And then I do a video in covering all the charts and try to give you guys the best picture on what I'm seeing. So if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and you can follow along with some of these picks and hopefully I'll be able to cover some of your picks as well. And if you've been with me for a little while, leave me a thumbs up and a comment. You know the drill, let's get right into it. We'll start out here with ZG, daily chart. We have an uptrend line right here on the daily chart. We've been walking up there. We broke that uptrend line right here and it's an impulsive breakdown. You can see it's one of the more impulsive uh, breakdown candles was when we impulsively sold down through that trend line. Then we came in for a back test right there. Uh, the back test did close way above here so they made it look like it was recovering the trend but the very next day opened right there, right below resistance. That would have been a great area if I would have spotted it to get short, of course, because you're you're opening right at resistance after after you know recovering support, creating that that bull trap. Uh, so that was a great area, and obviously huge sell off there. Let's see how big of a sell off that was. Yeah, ten percent drop right there. Obviously, I didn't see it. I can't catch them all, but um, and this didn't have any negative divergence basically in play, but the it, it does now, and so you can see here on the RSI, negative divergence now. So this move up created that negative divergence. Wasn't there yet, but now it is there. So we've got negative divergence. We have a break in trend already. We have a back test. So I think this one heads lower. However, I don't like the, you know, I don't want an entry right here. I'd rather get an entry if we can get another back test. Uh, if we can't get a back test, I'll probably just move on and look for something different. I don't like to get into a trade after the trade has already started to play out. Uh, it's this area right here is too high of a risk for me. If they do a back, if I get in short here and they do a back test, I potentially lose you know eight to ten percent. And if they and if it goes in your favor, of course you make money. But again, I don't like to be that far away from resistance. I like to get into my positions with low risk areas, which is right near uh, resistance or support, right near the level. So this one, I need to see a back test. If we can do another back test anytime soon and make a new marginal high, that will be a div divergent high, and that would be the area I'd be looking to start a position or um, add to a position if you've already taken it. Moving on. Amazon, I cover this one quite often, but we'll just do it. Someone asked me to cover it. All right, so potential head and shoulders. I've got it marked out right here in green, these squiggly lines. It's a potential. We need to see the break of the neckline. So I've got the neckline sitting. Let me go to the daily chart here. Uh, I've got the neckline sitting, you know, right down here at about 2,935. Um, so a breakdown, an impulsive breakdown of there, and that basically make says that this is most likely a major topping pattern. And when I say major, I'm talking about, you know, potentially years. But here's the other thing. We'd also on Amazon have this big major support line going all the way back to 2009. We had one test of it right there and another test right there. So we have three data points. So if this is a topping pattern here and Amazon's going to move down, it's going to struggle, you know, it's going to find some support down at this trend line. On the daily, you can see we had negative divergence right up here. This was a divergent high. So that's when we started to, that's when the negative divergence was actually put into place. And we haven't had a new high since. So again, negative divergence on the daily, potential head and shoulders topping pattern. It's still intact. So it, this could be a major top in Amazon. And a move down to the, to the more major support line is about a... 33% drop. So I'm watching that, but that's all I really see in this one on the daily chart. On the hourly chart, yeah, we're just kind of sideways. You can see here, I mean, it's just this big sideways range. So until we break one way or the other, that's all I got. Here's when, when I see support right about there, which is sitting at about 69.50. Sorry, I got my wife's sister's dogs are over. Um, so we got support right here at about 
Um, we'll tighten that up here in a second. No negative divergence. Uh, there is no bullish divergence either. So ultimately on this one, I, I just think that we're in this big sideways range like this. That's all I see. I don't see anything else. Uh, top of the range up here around 109. Bottom bottom of the range, 69. You know, so and we're sitting in the middle of the range right now. So I don't see anything else. If I look at the weekly, uh, yeah, again, same thing. So just a sideways range, indecisive. Here's shop. Uh, I've obviously charted this one before. Um, negative divergence clearly on, well, this is the weekly chart. So we have big weekly negative divergence. That tells me there's a bigger move to the downside coming. <clears throat> daily, clear negative divergence here on the daily. Um, was really just continuing to build and it's just continuing. So any new highs are divergent highs. Um, we had a little trend line right here that we broke. It looks like we're doing a back test. So I think we head down to the major trend line. That's what, that's what this is telling me. If I look at the hourly here, just to see what's going on. Yeah, I just see downward momentum on this. I don't see, uh, you know, right now we're just sideways, but usually stocks can kind of stall out and go sideways before they start trending down. Uh, and that's what I think is gonna happen. So on this one, we've got this major trend line coming off the March 2016 lows. Reaction here, reaction here. So a move down to that trend line should be major support, and that's a move of about 50%. Uh, so that's what I see in that one, heading down to that major trend line. A uh, definitive break of right about there. Let's look, right about. Uh, a definitive break, a daily close below 885 should do the trick. Now you can see we had the break right here and that's what, you know, but it was when it recovered, that's a bear trap. So again, just cause something breaks doesn't mean it's not gonna be a bear trap. That's why you wanna look for an impulsive breakdown and continued selling. But um, you know, that was a bear trap and then we had a huge rally. If we break back down there again, probably gonna be, that'll probably do the trick and we'll probably head lower, especially with these big negative divergences uh, intact. So I'll set an alert for this one. Here's AMD. I didn't even have to mark this one up. I already had it marked up. So you can see here, we've just been in the sideways chop zone. The market's do doing a lot of the sideways chop zone. I've seen it across the board on several things. So we got this going on. We got to get out of this before we figure out what the next move is. We have big negative divergence um, on the daily chart. So you can see this was a divergent high right there. That's right when the negative divergence was actually created. And we haven't hit a new divergent high since. So any move above that recent high, if it happens soon and then turns down, will have been a divergent high. We also have a trend line right here coming off of the January or February 2016 lows and lots of reactions on this one. You can see, so that's a nice trend line. I'd be waiting for a breakdown of that trend line. The divergence tells the negative divergence on the daily tells me we're at least going to go down and test the trend line. Uh, but you can also see on the weekly we've got negative divergence as well. So I think we're going to break the trend line. We just have to sit there and wait for it. We'll cover DraftKings again. DraftKings uh, potential head and shoulders going on, but we've got this sideways trading range right about there. And we're just lots of trading action in there. We got above it, faded. And so now there's this potential for a uh, head and shoulders. We got a shoulder, the head, and maybe we make another shoulder here and then break. But again, a break of the neckline 35.50 is what I would be looking for. On the weekly, we have, this thing's just been negative. <laughs> this is just one big negative divergence since it's basically open. So you can see here just but again, on the weekly is not a reason to just get short. You can see if you got short when you first had negative divergence right here, the thing still went up, you know, from the point of that negative divergence, another 50%. So that just tells you that it's potentially, you know, due for a big fall to the downside, but it takes a time to play out on these weekly charts. So we'll just watch this, uh, you know, we'll watch this range right here, top end, 
is about uh, 44. Bottom end is 35.50. A break either one way or the other, we'll, uh, we'll look further. Uh, it still has negative divergence on the daily as well. So tells, you know, we, we obviously, we had the big move down. So maybe that's all that this divergence told us. Maybe we're gonna move up now, but I don't see any bullish divergence. I just see, you know, upward momentum and slightly higher prices. But we could easily top out here and head lower. Roku, here's your daily chart. You have an uptrend line right there, walking up the uptrend. You've got negative divergence right there on the daily. And here, this was a divergent high, kind of right in, right there. That's a divergent high, that little, that candle right there. So uh, I'd just be looking for a break of the trend line. You know, until we break, there's no sell signal. It can continue to move higher and continue to diverge. But a break in the trend line would set this up for a move to the downside. Disney here, daily chart. Here's your uptrend line right there. Uh, we broke the trend right here and it drifted sideways, looked like it was going to break down, but instead they gapped it up uh, and it recovered the trend line. So it closed right there on support. Uh, we closed on support today and I see in the after hours it's up 3% in the after hours. So it's bouncing off support is basically what it's doing. So that's support. Uh, we did not really have any divergence that I can spot. There was a slight bullish divergence right there. You can see it uh, where, yeah, it's not the cleanest. It's not really bullish divergence. So in general, uh, I don't see any, I just see upward momentum. I don't see any divergences and I see us holding the trend line as of right now. Okay, and SPWR, Sun Power. I've got my eye on a lot of these solar stocks. I think they're, they're I think they're gonna come down. I'm already short run, and that one has been working out very nicely. So I'm looking at some of these others. I'm looking at the TAN ETF. I've got that down here, which is the solar stock ETF. When this ETF breaks, I'm sure a lot of these, these solar stocks are gonna break. Uh, we got Sun Power, we've got negative bullish, diver, or negative bearish divergence, clean divergence right there. Uh, and, <clears throat> We have it on the PPO as well. We've got this uptrend line right here. I have an alert set on this one actually, so we'll see. But as of right now, looks like it's gonna come down, chop around the trend line and then break. So I'm waiting for the break of the trend line. Because I see a lot of negative setups, uh, short trades on these solar stocks, that's kind of how I'm looking at a lot of these right now. So TAN is the ETF, I'm looking to short that one. If I can't get any shares, Lightspeed hasn't had any shares for me to short. Uh, on tan recently so you know i don't know what's going on with that but i can always look at some of these individual solar stocks and i'm already in that sun run i'm short sun run right now uh, and that one's working out nicely so that's really all i got and just before i wrap someone asked me what they what i mean by longer term shorter terms kind of time frames okay well i mean ideally when i'm talking about longer term I really, it goes back to the SPY chart. And when I look at the SPY, I see, I'm looking back 10 years, really going back to 2009. Here's my 2009, the last great recession and the lows. This is your bull market. You know, this lasted 10 years or so. And now we broke in 2018. So when I say longer term, I'm really talking about going back to 2018 when we broke the trend. And now I'm looking for moves to the downside based on this big topping pattern. So longer term, I think we go down to you know some of these areas, and that's we're talking years basically. Um, and yeah, I will be you know I will be extremely bullish at some point in time and only looking for longs. But when we're up here, right up here, I'm really only looking for shorts. And that's, you know, I mean, for the most part, obviously there's some longs, there's always some longs. Uh, I just, I think there's more, I think it's easier to spot a lot of these shorts. We're getting a lot of negative divergence in a lot of these high flying COVID stocks. They've all ran like crazy to the upside. And so now I'm seeing all kinds of signs of reversal and trend and momentum. So I'm looking for that. Those are the trades that I'm really, I think are gonna be the most profitable uh, last week, you, you you know, every single one of those shorts pretty much worked out for 20% gains across the board. So monster week. 
And that's really all I got, guys. So thank you. Catch you on the next one.